everyone. My name is Marco Castro, and I'm going to talk about a, uh, to you about a project called Bus Roots, and I like to call it Green Infrastructure on Wheels. Um, this is a project I've been working for the last uh, three years, and I can tell you, I'll tell you a little bit of what the story and how the process came to be, how, uh, what I, where, it's a, where is the project right now. Uh, this is, uh, I'm an interaction designer. I'm originally from Mexico, and this is a project I was working on before I came to New York. It's, it's a digital art festival, so we were trying to look at how technology can be implemented in, series, in cities so that people can interact with the spaces. So here we intervene in a, theater, a theater with video games and people can play around. So then I came to New York to study uh, at NYU at the Intera Interactive Telecommunications Program, which is an amazing program, at least for me, uh, where 100 people from different backgrounds come together in the same sandbox and they start playing and breaking technology and making new things. And at the same time, it's in New York City, which is, uh, well, I mean, for me, it's always, it was also very inspiring to see this great city where all these people come together again with all these different ideas. Uh, somebody was talking about how getting exposed to different ideas makes you put things together in very different ways. So I, I start here, and then there's also the other side of New York City, uh, Times Square, which I try to avoid a little bit uh, when I can. But uh, also when uh, we're, we're reaching, we reached like two years ago, the global population, we reached seven billion. And uh, over half of the population lives in cities. So there's all the, all the good sides of living in the cities. And there's also all the bad sides. But at, at, at the end, it's very good that we're all living in cities. It makes it more, uh, it's more sustainable if we do it the right way. As I was doing my thesis, I was like, oh, it's amazing. All these people are doing great technologies. They're, we can communicate online. We can do sensors. We can add things. We can project things on buildings. What can you, would you do to make people interact and care about their cities, I was thinking. So as I was doing my thesis, I was reading this book, Cradle to Cradle, which many of you may, may know, which is basically talking about closed loops of productions and consumptions. As a designer, for me, it was like, how do, how do I create something when I finished reading this book, I was just like, for a weekend, I was like, I, I cannot do anything. Anything I design is going to end up in the landfill. And uh, there was also this picture uh, by Chris Jordan, where there's this island where all these birds end up eating all this trash that we create. So th th you can understand, like, for me, as I was doing my thesis, it was like, oh, great, I can do anything I want. I'm in New York City, and it's great. And they're like, oh, great, anything I design is going to have an implication. And it can end up here if I design something 3D printed. Yes, 3D printed is going to save the world. Yes, I just imagine like well, uh, if it ends up here, it's going to be a bad, a bad choice. So that's uh, then also I came to New York. It was like the center of like for my universe at least. It was like oh, it's New York, and then uh, any rain, any snowcalypse, any snowstorm, it would be like oh, sorry, we stopped. Uh, subways are down, and then that that was even before Sandy. I think even before that, the rains were stopping in New York City. So like, there's got to be something that we're doing wrong in the cities. It's New York City. Supposedly the most advanced city uh, in design has been, do it's been dealing with rains for a long time and we're still getting very different uh, and we are having new challenges. So I just, uh, I was thinking, how can we reconnect urban spaces, urban and natural spaces in a way that we can get all the good side of, the ci of living in a city with all the, also the benefits of living in natural space. And I started looking at, okay, this is how New York looked in 1609. This is a, a picture from the Manhattan Project. And you're like, okay, we cannot go back to this, even if we tried, it, as, uh, a nice, as, as a nice intention as it is. It's very hard to go that, and we, don't, we cannot really do that. And it's, we lose all the part of the ideas of human sharing stories. Then I looked at how designers were doing biomimicry, getting inspiration from nature, uh, like this uh, train in Tokyo who's inspired by the hummingbird's beak, or this, uh, this is a Volks, uh, Volkswagen inspired by the fish above. So we're like, okay, there's something that we're doing right and let's try to find things. And uh, so th then I looked at how people were greening cities and how they were installing. And at the time it was still, <coughs> there was Toronto doing green roofs and there was uh, Chicago doing like a, putting gardens on top of buildings. We're like, okay, what about if we had, uh, I was also thinking plants, when they get rain, they don't really, they don't really die. They actually love the rain. So what happens when you New Yorkers if it rains, people are just like, I need to get to my place, I need to get out of the rain, like, like get me out of here, and people go crazy, traffic goes nuts, and it was like, everybody's like, oh, it was a rainy day, and people get mad. So we're like, why that happens? Like, plants don't do that. They actually like, oh, look at this, it's raining. So they just <laughs> embrace it. 
So they were like, okay, let's add more plants. And we're like, okay, yes, you're in New York. that's great, but uh, you're in New York, real estate is expensive. Uh, you cannot buy an apartment for a plant, so let's uh, get back to the drawing board. Uh, they, uh, I looked at how Chicago and uh, Toronto were doing green roofs, and it was great. It was like, okay, my, they, they provide all these benefits. Uh, you can see them, and there's like, this is all the uh, research that's been coming out of it. We were like, okay, imagine if we covered all the green roofs in New York City with plants. There was also the vertical gardens. Imagine if we covered all the buildings, the facades, and all the, the walls with gardens. Okay, that's great. Uh, it will take a while, yes. Uh, what happens to the streets? So that's basically when I started thinking, okay, well, all the streets in the middle, they're basically the arteries of the city. We think of a city as a system, as a, hum as a living system. You have all the infrastructure and you have all the arteries, all the streets. What happens to those streets? Uh, you cannot cover them in grass. I mean, in my thought, like, oh, let's put we cannot put grass or any type of plants on the streets. We need them. We need them to transport goods and products and ideas again. So we're like, okay, what happens if it's a traffic jam? Imagine if you're, so that's when I put the two together, like, well, look at all this fancy new, uh, fancy surface on top of buses. Nobody's using that, or even as an artist, he was like, oh, look at that white canvas. Uh, as a designer, like, oh, they're just using it for the air conditioning and for the, the, the air conditioners or the boxes on top. So that's when I, I was like, okay, what would it look like if we actually used the roof of the uh, New York City buses as a garden? And uh, then I started looking into it, and it was like, okay, there's 4,500 buses at the, the MTA has in New York City. If we added the gardens, it would be like 35 acres of nomadic green spaces in the city. And I'll get a little bit into what the nomadic green space is actually also very, I found later it was very interesting. So this is like, a, so I just started imagining like, oh, imagine all these different buses come, going around the city. It's a network, you convert a parking lot instead of having a parking lot with the uh, with white surfaces, you can actually see a parking lot converted into a park. And not only that, it's a, yeah, it's a Spryan Park. You have Central Park, which is beautiful, but only the people who live around it get the benefits of open, opening their windows and seeing Central Park. Uh, at least I can't afford it. But what about uh, all this? There's also all these people in the different neighborhoods who don't have access to fresh food or don't have access to greenery. So, but they do have access to this bus that passes every morning, every hour, every 15 minutes by their doorstep. What about if it had a garden on top? And every time it stopped, at least it provided, oh, there's some greenery in my doorstep. At least that's, I do have that. I do have that bus that even at 2 a.m., even at 3 a.m., you can hear the beep, beep, like all the doors opening and everything. It's, you, you learn to live with it, it's New York. So this is what I've been uh, using. It's a com I started researching into what different uh, method we could use to make it lightweight, uh, because that was the biggest challenge, like how can we make it lightweight? So it's a combination of extensive green roofs, which is what the, this is the lightest green roof there is right now, uh, green cloaks, which is a project that the University of Maryland is researching, hydroponics, a very little bit, because uh, hydroponics, in my experience, they take more maintenance than I would want for the gardens on the buses, and subrogated planters, which I found are the most uh, resilient ways of planting. That's the only way that uh, people who don't have a green thumb, they can actually make the plants survive. It's basically putting water on the bottom. So we're like, okay, let's put all this together and see what can we make. Uh, this is what, I, like, what I've been uh, working a little bit. This is with uh, Architecture for Humanity. They, they were helping come up with some designs to actually make it a uh, lighter weight so that it wouldn't hold the rain, so it wouldn't be sitting on the bus. Uh, this is like the, the calculations we have so far for the weight. And this was the first prototype. It was on top of the biobus, which is like a science lab on wheels. So we added a, uh, a, a, a extensive green roof on the back, and it's been there since three years ago. Uh, very little maintenance, like I haven't seen the bus in a year, and the plants are still rolling because it's all native plants. Sedum, which are like the strongest and the most resilient plants I have seen and native plants, which every, every time in the spring, they'll come back alive. There are native plants from the Parks Department nursery in Staten Island. This is an, a second prototype that the University of Maryland was doing on their uh, park meter trucks. So they were like, oh, we have these uh, trucks that actually go and collect the money from the park meters in the campus. We never use them. We use them seldomly to put uh, tools to fix the park meters or something, but normally we don't use them at all. 
So what I was, they were like, why can we do something like that? So they did this prototype, which is basically the top and the bottom, you can actually store tools under the garden, which I mean, it was like, uh, I think it's still going on. It's been there for at least two, one year. This is the th uh, third prototype we did in St. Louis. There was this couple who were uh, coming back from Australia for doing like a who farming, like the, where they volunteered to farm or in on organic farms in Australia. They wanted to do something back in their community. So they, they came and do this business, uh, which was basically a totally vegan, sustainable, local uh, food truck that I would sell food to the, lo to the offices in St. Louis area. They saw the project and like, well, let, why don't we put a garden on top of our food truck so our food not only, is not only local, but hyper-local, because we can, actually, <laughs> we can actually serve greens from the, these are the greens after one year. Uh, they were very good gardeners, so they took very well care of the plants, so we put all, uh, mostly edible, I mean, they were all edible plants, strawberries, mint, purslane, some lettuces, uh, lemongrass, I think, over here. And this is the pro uh, uh, fourth prototype we presented at the new museum for the city, the, City of New Ideas, and uh, it was also making it as lightweight as possible. Uh, it was using mostly sedum. We added some native plants later, and uh, this is when they were presented at the fair. So I'm working on a new food truck now with, uh, it's, uh, with some people here in, uh, in Hoboken, and also with a food truck in the materials for the arts which is a great organization in New York City, parts of the, part of the Cultural Arts and Council for the city. They basically collect a lot of the material that's left over from the film production, this, uh, fashion design, and any type of this, uh, design facilities that happen in the city. They collect it and they redistribute it to artists and schools and nonprofit groups so they can actually have art programs in the city. So for me, that's very important to be working with them because they actually it's like partnering with a great organization that's talking about the closed loops and actually talking about the waste and how can we actually talk about making a, like a closed system in the city that I can, I can actually uh, work. Uh, so that's where I'm working with them to get the garden on this truck and we can actually measure how much uh, water is capturing, uh, how much temperature it allows for the truck uh, to absorb and uh, trying to show that also to the DEP uh, because right now there's a big, there's a big uh, project in New York. The green roofs are, are being pushed very strongly uh, because they help uh, capture rainwater. Basically, they divert all the water, all the rainwater, instead of going to the sewage, the plants can use it. It's a combined sewage system. And so there's a big grant for green infrastructure. Obviously, it's not a, not a moving green infrastructure. That doesn't really exist for plants to be moving. So that's part of what the, the research I've been doing is like, what does it mean for plants to move? Uh, the plants, there's actually some research that shows that plants actually like the vibration of the, of the truck. I mean, some plants vibrate it and it's because of the oxygen moving up and down the plant. There's also some other, uh, well, there is how much water it's capturing and that's what the University of Maryland and the University at Drexel are helping me out with. And uh, so that's, uh, that's, I mean, this is how basically why it started, like the real, uh, with a phrase from Marcel Proust, the real voyage of discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. And uh, that's how I imagine uh, the New York City or any space basically that I encounter. So that's, that's all. Thanks so much.